Ever since the growth of civilization, mankind has learned several arts and crafts. Depending on the regional requirements and prospects, each of these arts and crafts were gradually adopted locally by peripheral and specialized sections. Subsequently, every craft unique in itself was developed from time to time and passed on to generations bringing in several refinements. Painting as an art received wide appreciation since ancient times. Emperors and kings of different countries patronized various art forms with little more emphasis on painting. India too promoted several art forms including drawing and painting since times immemorial. One such art is Batik art which has spelt mesmerism on the minds of art lovers for ages. Bhati kante ba ante vaxu tik kante chukka. Maina mu chukka la do kudu kuna tu ante kala kavati bhati kante tu ante dochindi. I cracks yo ka andame bhati chitra kala. Mikita kala la kono dini ki teeda ante ante indula ante tu ante cracks yo mere kala la undo. Mari yo ka andam cracks wala ne vastundi. This exquisite art has been the heartthrobe of millions across the world. The technique of wax resistant dyeing on fabric is an ancient art form. Batik is a cloth that traditionally uses a manual wax resistant dyeing technique. The batik fabric should generally be of a pure form like pure cotton or pure silk. Uh, the specialty of Bhatik painting is uh, the patterns you get from Bhatik painting. This is only, uh, you can see only in Bhatik medium. And uh, the good thing about Bhatik is every piece is unique. Even if you want to make another piece of same Bhatik painting, you won't be able to do it because of the way the Bhatik medium is, uh, uh, is. Because you can see the cracks, the patterns, these are all unique. The way the wax, you know, you can see the way, the way wax gets cracks. Based on that, you see these uh, patterns developing. So the painting started with white cloth, uh, then uh, you draw a sketch, line sketch with pencil or pen, and then you draw uh, you know, the lines with wax. Uh, and this painting is done by my father. Uh, he's been doing these paintings from last 50 years. And uh, this particular picture is uh, based on uh, his inspiration from Ajanta Elora cave uh, paintings. Batik of fabrics with the traditional batik patterns are found in several countries like Malaysia, Japan, China, Sri Lanka, Egypt, Singapore and more prominently in India and Indonesia. These Bhatik paintings are actually originated from India, even though you might have seen in places like, oh, it started out from Malaysia or Indonesia, but it actually started in India a while ago. 
uh, then when you know people start migrated migrating to different parts of the world for the you know labor uh, work uh, so when they move to different parts of the area for example some of the people from india they went to malaysia or you know indonesia where actually they started doing this batik work again but uh, the art again it's been brought back into india uh, uh, from uh, uh, she is actually daughter of nandalal bose so uh, uh, at shantini ketan that's where uh, this art been again revitalized in india batik painted clothes are highly durable they portray a huge array of themes which include religious themes as well as abstract patterns Batik print is the common name given to fabric that incorporates batik pattern without actually using the wax resistant dyeing techniques. The word batik or batik is believed to have been coined in Indonesia. It is derived from the word ambatik, summing up as a cloth with many dots. It is also believed that the word batik could have been construed from a hypothetical Proto-Austronesian root basic meaning to tattoo, wherein a needle is used the main one of the uh, ma material that you need uh, for batik is uh, batik pen so the reason i'm holding two pens is uh, this is one of the pen that's been used in other countries and rest of the world uh, this is called uh, you know batik pen so as you can see it can hold uh, you know hot wax so basically you dip this pen into hot wax and then you start drawing so the reason batik name came because uh, you know hot wax uh, starts dripping and you know the way it's like you know tick tick you know that's how the name batik came so this is the pen that's been used in rest of the world and uh, this is the pen that my father designed for batik for, uh, this is you can call for most uh, uh, indian customization of batik paintings uh, uh, because uh, this pen is uh, designed by my father uh, it starts with a stick and you can see two metal pins and then uh, he wraps around with the thread and uh, this is the pen the way he holds this pen is you know you dip this into the hot wax and uh, you have to draw a line in a way that you need to have control over this pen because otherwise uh, the wax is starts dripping and it's it's a free flow so if you don't control it very well you can see uh, for example i would say uh, you know simple example here as you can see you know white dot this is because uh, when you start uh, taking the hot you know when you dip this pen into hot wax and by the time you reach the you know point where you want to draw you know you, it's possible to see you know some of these drops Siddhi Peta of Telangana region in Andhra Pradesh is well known for batik wall hangings Siddhi paint batik paintings involve dyeing of the cloth to produce intricate designs and patterns by using cold wax Another unique pattern in Siddhipet batik paintings is that the wax is let to flow drop by drop through the nib of the kalam a brush specially made for the purpose
అంటే ఈ కళ అసలు కష్టంతో కూడుకున్నటువంటి పని మిగతా పెయింటింగ్స్ బ్రష్తో చేస్తే చాలు కానీ ఒక బ్రష్తే కాదు దీన్ని మళ్ళీ ఆ రంగులు అద్దడం రంగులని తొలగించడం మళ్ళీ ఉతికి ఆరవేయడం ఇవన్నీ కూడా ఉన్నాయి కాబట్టి ఇది కష్టంతో కూడుకున్నటువంటి పని Batik constitutes the process wherein a line or a patch of melted wax is applied onto the cloth before being dipped in dye. It is common for people to use a mixture of beeswax and paraffin wax. The beeswax will hold to the fabric and the paraffin wax allows cracking which is a characteristic feature of batik painting. Wherever the wax has seeped through the fabric, the dye will not penetrate thereby resulting in division of the fabric into dyed and undyed areas. This is honey bee wax, so it's been, uh, so it, is, it has a very good property, uh, which is basically it holds up when you actually do the batik and when you dip the cloth in uh, colors. So it holds up uh, so well that uh, we use it for lines because the lines is the one which you want to uh, see less number of, uh, you know, cracks uh, or the patterns. And this is paraffin wax, which, which has a property to make more of cracks, as you can see in some areas where, you know, more cracks here or you know you can see for example more cracks here this is a these are the areas we use this wax and in some scenarios we use combination of both honeybee wax and paraffin wax so that we can get both uh, advantages of both uh, types of wax the colors or dyes used have to be prepared only in containers made of enamel steel or plastic as the properties of the containers made of other materials affect the dye After waxing, the material is dipped in a dye bath. The first color is the lightest tone to be used. The old process of batik doesn't allow the artist to apply many colors in one go. However, the modern techniques have advanced and have made it easy for the artist wherein one can use the brush to apply many colors at a time. Final process in Bartik painting is uh, removing the wax. Uh, when the removing the wax is uh, one of the tedious tasks. Uh, uh, when, once you remove the wax, the way that we remove the wax is you know dip this uh, uh, waxed cloth in hot water, hot boiling water, so that the wax can uh, uh, w washed out from the cloth. Then we wash this cloth uh, in a, uh, uh, with detergents, and then this is the final appearance that you could see. So as you can see, uh, this is a washed, uh, completely wax removed piece of batik painting. Dyes used in batik print include indigo, Prussian, naphtha salt, acid and instant batik dyes. 
the colors we use uh, for this batik paintings are uh, naphthal based colors so these colors are permanent the reason i say permanent is uh, we have to go through the rigorous process of removing this wax at later stages so the colors we use have to withstand that process so let me show uh, this white cloth with line drawings then we drew the uh, lines with the batik pen and we dip this cloth in a uh, yellow color uh, and as you can see on this one uh, when we dip this cloth in yellow color you can see yellow color and uh, some places where you can see some cracks being already developed and these are the lines so what we do is on this cloth we apply the wax where we want to keep the yellow color for example if we want to keep the you know face with yellow color we apply the wax here and uh, the places wherever you apply the uh, uh, wax the color is being preserved and rest of the places you know the next color will come so after final dyeing the material is dried and placed between two layers of absorbent papers and ironed to pull out the wax out of the material this would reveal the pattern or picture that has been permanently dyed onto the cloth you know the places where uh, you apply the uh, hot wax it preserves the color so on the white cloth we taken we have taken so you see the lines have been drawn with hot wax so you can see the white color uh, in rest of the place some places for example here you see red color so the reason you see red color here is uh, we applied wax here so that the red color is there but in other places you can see chocolate color or black color so with similar uh, process we follow for rest of the colors but the main advantage of batik is the patterns or the textures that you can get are unique for each painting and uh, you can see when we apply a uh, red color uh, followed by chocolate color you can see some of the cracks been developed here and different forms and on red color you see chocolate or black or on yellow you can see red and as well as chocolate color and black so uh, you can see for example here in this area so after re white red yellow so all these colors you can see here the end result is always an exciting moment in either old or latest processes as one could never be sure of the perfect separation of colors Uh, some people actually tried and made uh, experiments uh, using acrylic colors so that you don't have to go through the multiple steps but what happens is uh, the uniqueness of batik is actually the way the cracks being developed in multiple stages so if you reduce those number of stages the main purpose of batik painting that is you know natural patterns that you are basically reducing them and uh, the way you do this uh, batik is you can use it like wall hangings or uh, some people have done experiments uh, with framing this in fiber you know you can put fiber on both sides and with special light because the good thing about batik is the picture is there on both sides it's not a print so since it's a, uh, you can see on picture on both sides you can also do you know uh, you get the same appearance from both sides uh, similarly uh, you can some some people have been used using this for interior decoration apart from wall hangings they also use it for you know dress materials and other purpose those are all uh, the side benefits of batik but the main benefit of batik is for wall hangings and uh, for interior decoration so whenever you do batik some of these patterns those are unique to each piece and uh, it's that's why probably it is been uh, lovable by many people and also it's it's an uh, one of the art which is affordable to many people batik and tie and dye are the most popular and attractive forms of painting art there is a perceptible change in individuals inclination towards this art Batik has carved a niche for itself in the field of arts and crafts. The 
these paintings are all over the world and they are part of the museums, they are part of personal collections from different countries like US or England or other countries. And uh, uh, one good example I wanted to share is uh, amount of appreciation uh, in terms of foreigners that, uh, you know, they like this art is, uh, you know, they buy this painting, you know, for, you know, uh, typically hundreds or, you know, thousands rupees, right? But uh, one example is uh, they actually spent uh, 10 times the, you know, painting price to frame this. So you won't be believing. So we were surprised when we were told they spent about like uh, $10,000 to frame uh, one of these paintings. And we were so shocked, but at the same time, we were happy as well because, uh, you know, the amount of appreciation that we could get from uh, different art lovers across the world. One can easily recognize a batik item as it has established its own identity. This art is playing an important role in creating designer garments and decorative items in many homes and offices. As a result, the popularity of batik and tie and dye prints has increased many fold over the years. So, Batik is a medium which helps us uh, showcase our uh, rich Indian culture to the rest of the world and we all should be proud of uh, our Indian culture at the same time we need to be proud of uh, different types of uh, ancient handicrafts that we have been doing for over the period of years and we need to be proud to continue this art medium in future generations as well. Artists in this medium grow only when they carry on experiments and hone their ideas. The key to a good work of art in Batik is patience. This sense of design varies from person to person, instilled in some, while it needs to be developed by others. It's one's inner urge to break the creative boundaries that enables to enjoy this exciting, magical and spontaneous medium.